who are from, were from Central Asia. So maybe this person meant uh, the motherland or the fatherland. But now you won't find any mention of this religion. What were the details of those religions? Only just uh, very uh, oblique references are given in some historical books. So that some, something on that line could have happened and did happen to the Christians of Kashmir. One fundamental difference which has this was that Jesus Christ has known in the past where he lived the early part of his life has a completely different concept and picture than what he created and left after the migration. According to St. Paul, who is, who is there is influence much later and he has never met Jesus Christ. Only he said, he claimed that he met him in dream or vision. He is the, in fact, the real author of a modern Christianity. He is it who first introduced the concept of Trinity into Christianity. Before that, Christians didn't know of any Trinity and uh, they believed in one God and, and in, in Jesus Christ as the messenger of Allah. So the whole figure of Christianity got distorted. distorted. And whatever you hear of Jesus Christ is that distorted picture which was introduced later on uh, into Christianity by other foreign influences. Influences foreign to the land from which he had taken according to the Jewish concept and a divorce took place between the Judaism and Christianity later on and it still mm, uh, continues the same source of deterioration continues to enlarge into so many gods and saints and things and which are all completely alien to the Christianity of Jesus Christ but when he was there in Kashmir he could not have preached the same Christianity. He must have preached the reality. Of course, he couldn't have changed his mind after being delivered from crucifixion. So, he went and preached there one more, the message of love, and all that Christianity stood for in reality. That is one thing that happened in the post-crucifixion <coughs> life of Jesus Christ. Now, for that we have some ev historical evidence. And uh, that historical evidence is first revealed by the uh, Hindu Puranas. And second, it is just recently discovered by an Oxford scholar who went to investigate the old uh, Sufi tribes the rich tribes of uh, one province in, in Iran. Huh? Iraq. Iraq province. And the book uh, I have in mind is uh, entitled uh, Among the Derivations. It was only a recent publication, I think about 10 years ago or so, or even less perhaps. But now I am coming first to the first part. The evidence we find in the Indian Chronicles, which are called uh, Puranas, is uh, about uh, Raja Shalva, a king of Kashmir, who was a contemporary of Jesus Christ. <coughs> he, it is said that once that king was uh, going uh, on a hunting tour, and he noticed somebody foreign to Kash Kashmiris along with his companions walking in one of the valleys. He approached him and asked him, put him this question, who you are, who you are? And he replied, this foreign, foreigner, <coughs> that I am a prophet prince, a prince prophet. And further, told that I was uh, so terribly tortured by my people 
that I should have died, but for the promise of Allah which He gave me, uh, which He had given me earlier. And He saved me miraculously from that cautious death. And so I migrated to your land. He asked him what was his name, and he told him, My name is Lazarus. Uh, <coughs> Apparently, it is a name in two parts, use and asas. But it can be read together as uses and f, an additional f, which can be added in some languages. F and v, va sounds, are sometimes added. And some people are very, have very fond of such sounds. <coughs> Usas and use asas are very similar sounds. But even use is quite a noun, and after being this an epithet, meaning something else. <coughs> you have gone after interpreting, uh, gone interpreting this word in a different way. But anyway, it has come very close. And the name of the faith, he said, love. Love is the name, is the name of my faith. Now that is very interesting evidence. And this evidence was not revealed for the first time by empathy. It was revealed for the first time by a Christian bishop of Russia. About 200 years ago, he discovered this and made his reference to this in his own book. And that book is preserved in the Pope's library even today. He mentioned these Puranas but with one difference. He distorted the story himself and said that it is known on the evidence of Puranas that our Lord Jesus Christ travelled to Kashmir and delivered his message there, but it was before the act of crucifixion, not after the act of crucifixion. Now this is what he has said in the uh, uh, text but if you go to the, to the appendix in the end of the book, he mentions himself, this trickery. He confesses it. He says, I have said that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ had gone to Kashmir prior to his crucifixion, but that is of course my interpretation. As far as Puranas go, they clearly say, that he went there after crucifixion. As it is impossible, it cannot have happened. So I have understood that perhaps he was mistaken. It was before crucifixion that he went. But the whole story preserved in the Puranas totally belies this. He has been <coughs> consciously dishonest about it. Because the story says that they put me to such torture I should have died, except for, for the uh, act of crucifixion, this story does not apply to anything. Nothing else of the same nature has ever happened to Christ before the act of crucifixion. So that is a very strong evidence. Now how things got mixed up, this is very interesting. You know perhaps that about uh, 500 to 600 years before Jesus Christ, Buddha had appeared in <coughs> India. And he had a large following in the area where Christ worked. And he prophesied very clearly that a, another Buddha is going to appear to you after about 600 years or 500 years, exactly the same time after which uh, Jesus Christ appeared there. <coughs> and uh, the Buddhists record the coming of the second Buddha and they relate things exactly those which had happened to Jesus Christ. A virgin birth of Buddha. <coughs> and of all the story is so similar that obviously the things got mixed up because at that time Buddhism was not written. The history of Buddhism was not written. Their teachings were not written. The first time we get the written evidence is through the law of the law.